Welcome back, 816 here on this uh, Friday morning with J.R. Simmer and Hammer. Simmer's last ride. I need a good mailing it in on this uh, Friday morning. Mailing it in. There you go. Simmer uh, prepares for a... Uh, what are you doing on your holidays next week? Uh, yeah, not a whole lot going on, Jer. Uh, I want to say it's very exciting, but it'll be pretty quiet time there. So, uh, yeah, nothing nothing huge. So, originally we planned to go down to Key West and up to Miami and... Uh, Wow. Some things ended up getting in the way. So, yeah, just be kind of a chill time. I, uh, You know what? That's that's kind of a uh, – there aren't a lot of bucket list places in Florida for me. I've been to Florida a few times. Yeah. Not, not a million times, but a few. Yeah. But I've never went been to uh, Key West. I'd like to go there. It looks yeah. really cool. I, I've never been either and kind of like the history of Florida, and I agree with you. And I was kind of mapping it out because that's one of the fun things when I used to do my own travel when I obviously worked in the NHL. But just overall – in planning and i think from south beach i think it's about a four hour ride to the bottom of key west like think about that and so all the different little places and popping around yeah I, i'm really kind of, yeah curious and I've done quite a bit of traveling but i agree with you i was excited to go but hey, another time all right uh keep the wrenches coming on this uh wrench throwing friday and again if you're new to the show of uh wrench throwing friday think of your acronym wtf which normally you go that's a swear which you can't say on the air but it's all about stuff getting stuff off your chest or anything that, that that has bothered you the last seven days, toss a wrench at it. Feel good going into the weekend. Could be sports related, could be non sports related. Does not matter. Text uh, your wrenches to us at twelve twelve hundred. You can tweet them as well at TSN twelve hundred. Uh, let's go through a few of these here. Good morning, guys. Uh, everyone seems to look at the Habs, the Blackhawks, and the Yotes as the tire fires, but the Philadelphia Tire Flyers. <laughs> I'm thinking are going to be 32nd in the NHL at the end of this year. Cheers, that's from your local FedEx guy. Yeah. Potential for the Flyers to be dead last this year? I, I, I'm not feeling that, but but here's the thing, and I'll say in Montreal, uh, I'm not going to go tire fire, but I'm just curious in that at least they're executing a plan. Whether the plan works out or JR, I'm not sure. Chicago, the manager is so far in over his head, the next thing he can do is trade out Patrick Kane for a draft pick or something. That That, that thing is a... They're back to the old Chicago Blackhawks. And as far as the Yotes, uh, I think their plan that's in place so far is pretty darn good. Just a question, can they get up from the swirl? What's happening in Philly is just a gong show. Like they, They're not going to be the 32nd team in the league. They'll be about 25, but there's no direction. There's no substance. There's no feel. And unfortunately, post-Mr. Snyder passing away, JR, they've lost their feel as an organization. They, they have lost all identity and I don't think it'll be long before Daniel Breer ends up being the general manager there, which is shame. Chuck Fletcher, good guy. Yeah. Um, but it just, you know, and in talking to a former player, uh, one of the jokes was with Gritty, you know, that that would never happen under Mr. Snyder. And he actually gets more love during the games and is kind of the face of the franchise, which is never a good Hang thing. Hang on, Ed Snyder would not have signed off on Gritty? No, never. Just the existence of yeah, Gritty or yeah, what Gritty does? No, the existence would never have allowed that Because why? Just a traditional flyer way of, hey, you know what, having what, somebody. not having fun? Uh, Well, yeah, I guess, sir, but just, yeah, traditionalist, whether I'm just saying, but, it, you know, just. But going next level with it, I guess, is and mm-hmm. what it, that's just the talk to me. Yeah, well, I, listen, I, I, I could, uh, I, I could see the argument of you know they, they promote gritty too much, uh, and they're and they're and and maybe because they don't feel like they have enough stars to promote, especially with their captain Claude Drew being traded away last year. I, I can see that argument a little bit, but I don't know. Are you blaming? The existence of your mascot for why the why the team is no going not down the no, tubes no and... not blaming anything. My point is they've lost their way as an organization. That's all. No, I'm just saying it's just a summarization. It has nothing. To, Gritty's not the reason they're losing. Just the point being, it's just a rudderless ship, and this is what it happened. Now you can also argue it happened when uh, uh, just before Eric Lindros came, and I'm trying to think of the general manager came out of Seattle in the Western Hockey Russ League. Farwell. Yeah, thank you. Um, and that was that. That was that feeling, Jer. You know, you had the crazy eights line, but it was just okay. And then all of a sudden, they had a new building or wanted a new building, and they pulled off the Lindros trade. So they were headed in that direction. Um, but right now, like I said, it just doesn't feel light. And, and start rating goal uh, with Miss Carter Hart, where Mister Sorry uh, has not gone very well. Well, it, it it would appear to me that Philadelphia just can't decide if they're in or they're out, mm-hmm. right? And that starts with, well, that's probably, the, that has to be the direction, I guess, from ownership uh, overall, but from the general manager, right? I mean, yeah. they've signed veteran players, yeah. but, you know, they're still trying to add some young, you know, like it's 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 either yeah. one of the other guys, yeah. it's not yeah. halfway, and they're stuck in that halfway. Yeah, and Provorov, rumors of, just like it was with Richards and Carter, maybe not focused on hockey, 
You look at the overall drafting, Bobby Clark coming out and blaming Ron Hextall for taking Patrick instead of McCarr, and then recent drafting under Chuck Fletcher. And unfortunately for Chuck, it, it follows a pattern of Minnesota where, you know, and, and when they signed Hayes, and I just point to that one, JR, of he had finally taken over, you're in a pretty good spot, and you roll in a guy that totally underachieved in his trade to Winnipeg, and Give him what seven million bucks? Yep. You know, and then you know, four more years. Yeah. So it just you know, it, 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 it yeah, they're just not a very good hockey team. No, and would appear to be going in a worse direction, not a better direction. Speaking of spinning your wheels, maybe at best spinning their wheels, but um, you know, to the point of are, are they the worst uh, team in the National Hockey League? Probably not, but no, maybe they no. reach a stage where I don't know. I you you would know the Philadelphia market more. I mean, would they accept a rebuild, a total rebuild in Philadelphia? Or is there so much pressure on the business side of things that they, you know, they, they will, um, you know, not necessarily go all out with all veteran players, but they have to be competitive to be able to sell tickets. I've always said this, JR, if you deny a rebuild, and now if you can do a retool like LA kind of did, but in the case of San Jose, Philadelphia, to some extent, the New York Islanders, you will arrive at the same point with your business, which Philadelphia is heading towards, whether you go into a rebuild or not. You know what I mean? Their business is headed in a very bad place because you deny a rebuild. So whether they'll accept it or not, it may be the price of, of doing business. I would like to think the educated sports fan in today's world would very much look at something like that. So I, I can't imagine that excuse that's used now. Hey, if you can fine tune, but if you, anybody can get out from underneath that San Jose mess and really turn that into a team, my God, good on you. You know, you should get the annual general manager award <laughs> every year because the owner says, well, we're not going to go into a full rebuild. Okay, well, well, I guess also you could argue they can't, and that's kind of where I'm curious with Montreal. San Jose can't go into a rebuild because they can't get rid of a number of their contracts. Uh, don't forget, Ascend's general manager, Pierre Dorian, is scheduled to guest the boys uh, with the boys on In the Box at 11 a.m. this morning. We'll get the very uh, latest from the Ascend's GM uh, as we get set to, uh, well, we get set for rookie camp coming up mid, uh, mid-September and then main camp toward the end of September. Still couple of pieces of business uh, to uh, figure out. First of all, a couple of unsigned restricted free agents in Eric Brandstrom and Alex Formanton. Uh, and as well, um, you know, a couple of potential pieces of business. I know you and, and many others are advocating for a, an extension for Artem Zub. Still got a year left on his contract, but uh, he is a UFA at the end of next season. Uh, I know Pierre Dorian will not specifically answer because, as he often says or always says, I don't negotiate through the media. Uh, but it'll be good to get a catch up with the Ascends GM coming up at 11 o'clock this morning here on TSN 1200. Yeah, and he, along with everybody else, has to be very excited. But again, part of people are like, well, I hear on Zoob that they're waiting to see what happens with Chicker and or where Sanders does not. Listen, don't give him a crazy contract, but five years at 4.5 million, even with a modified no trade, very easy asset to control and trade if you think you're too good for it. So don't really understand it. But as you said, two way street chair, maybe they don't want to sign. Yeah. Well, it's not that I don't want to sign, but yeah. uh, I, I, you know, uh, we often we we are are guilty as media and as fans often from always looking at things through the through the team's lens and not necessarily through the player's lens or the or in this case the agent's lens, right? Where we say, okay, well, this the well, you know, they they should have signed this guy because you know, uh, you know, he's an important part of the future. Yeah, absolutely. But you can you can want to sign a guy, but that doesn't mean the agent um, uh, is necessarily going to be returning your calls or is or, or wants to work on your timelines. Yeah. Right? yeah, I've just seen too many times in the past in contacting agents directly where they've not heard anything. So yep. that's only Fair my enough. side of the story. Fair enough. Absolutely. All right. So uh, Pierre Dorian will be on again at 11 o'clock this morning here on TSN 1200. Uh, I mentioned this earlier this week. Wanted to give you a little more detail uh, on the Stanley Cup being uh, here in the uh, in Ottawa and in the Ottawa Valley coming up next week, it will make its uh, pit stop with uh, Sen Skating and Development Coach uh, Sean Allard, and he's doing a couple of uh, public events, uh, both uh, which will revolve around tickets, but raising money for charity uh, as well. One in his hometown of Petawawa, so he's going to get the cup on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, and there is going to be an event uh, at, uh, let's see here, at the base, sorry, at the Petawawa Civic Center uh, happening on uh, Tuesday. Uh, we're gonna t- we'll are going to tweet out all the details on this, all right, from our TSN 1200 Twitter page, uh, because it is one of these things where you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to uh, buy a ticket to get into the event. And again, all the money that's raised will go to, um, will go to uh, worthwhile charities. All right, so there is an event in Petawawa at the Civic Center from 6 to 11. 
on Tuesday night and then uh, back here in Ottawa on Wednesday morning between 8 and 11 at the Bell Senseplex. They're having a skate with the Stanley Cup uh, event and six different. So they're, what, what they essentially have is six different over those three hours, half hour, um, half hour windows for people to uh, go and skate and take pictures, etc. with the Stanley Cup. And that's happening at the Bell Senseplex on Wednesday morning. So uh, far too much detail in terms of what the address is to get more information. So we'll tweet that out for you if you follow us on TSN 1200 Twitter uh, as far as how you can uh, get tickets to either the event in Petawawa Tuesday or the one at the Bell Senseplex on a- And that is the one in Canada, right, Jerry? Correct. Because yes. I, I would, and the other one's called uh, Ridgecraft. Yes. I, I would mix that up personally, so I had to double check because Maddie's going for a little Dave Stazos goalie camp there next week, and he mentioned the cup's going to be out there, so that's cool. Yes, exactly. Uh, by the way, the uh, money raised for the uh, one a- in Canada on Wednesday uh, will go to the uh, Ottawa Heart, in- Heart Institute and then Chio uh, as well. So we'll get that information out to you. But uh, And you mentioned uh, the Garth Joy. I don't know if Garth is doing any public stuff. Uh, or he's just, uh, um, he is a scout, right, with the Avalanche? Uh, no, he actually, and this is interesting, uh, just got hired as the assistant director of player personnel for the New York Rangers. Okay. So assumption is that goes back to, of course, Mr. Drury being with the Avs when Garth has been there for a long time. Okay. So he's just switched over. But he was with the team. Uh, absolutely. So he'll absolutely. get his day with the absolutely, Cup. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, yeah. He oh, you left the team, you don't get your day with the Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. All right, uh, 827. Let's take a break, come back. We'll get you right up to date on what's happening at the CP Women's Open. Don't forget next hour, Marcel Belfay, the head coach of the U Ottawa GGs, will join us. The new uh, university football season kicks off tomorrow. Carlton, by the way, is home to McMaster tomorrow uh, afternoon. Speaking of all kinds of great stuff going on around the city, you can take in. Uh, so Carlton home. The Ravens will open against uh, the McMaster Marauders tomorrow afternoon. Uh, U Ottawa is on the road in Windsor uh, tomorrow afternoon as well. Marcel Belfay will join us. Of course, they won the Panda last year. Find out. Uh, uh, how the team is looking for the uh, coming football season next hour as well. We got tickets and treats to go check out the movies on us with Landmark Cinemas coming up later on this hour as well as we continue along here on a Friday morning. You're listening to Sports Radio, TSN 1200. Brian and Rockland has a wrench on this wrench throwing Friday. How about a wrench all the drivers who do not turn their low beam headlights on during rain, especially those with black or gray cars. Great show, guys. It's from Brian and Rockland. Brian, thank you very much. Reminder, though, that if you do turn your lights on, which you should, like Brian says, remember to turn them off when you get to where you're going. Otherwise, you won't have, in all likelihood, the ability to start your car if your car is parked for the rest of the day. Don't most people just use the automatic headlights now, JR? I thought that was always a big thing in Canada anyway. American drivers are like, why are your headlights on all the time? Y- yes. Mine, mine yes. are on all the time. Yes. I don't know that necessarily means your taillights are on. That's always one thing that I'm a little bit confused about. Means oh, your head, really? The daytime running lights mean your headlights are on. Okay. But I don't know that means your taillights are on. Oh, okay, cool. So obviously when I press my brakes, they're on, but they yes. would in, uh, in a big rainstorm, you wouldn't see it. Okay. Matt, go, go flashers. Go flashers. Matt writes, good morning, gentlemen. Please throw a wrench at Mother Nature. I originally booked today off to play a round of golf. I don't get to play as often as I would like, but of course, today it has to be raining. That's from Matt. It was just the a shot quick shot at bounce, and Maroon got it. Yeah, it's Maroon. It was goal. already in. Oh. Uh, that is unfortunate, Matt, and unfortunately, uh, does not look like the weather is going to improve a whole heck of a lot uh, throughout the day today. And it has now reached a point just to update Lee's report uh, from uh, uh, round two of the uh, CP Women's Open that they have now uh, just stopped play within the last couple of minutes because. There is some lightning in the area of the hunt club, so the mm. golfers are being taken off the course, and of course the spectators are being told, those that are there, uh, to uh, get under, take cover as well. Uh, so we'll see um, when play does resume. We don't think this is going to be an issue which is going to cancel play for the entire day, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, with uh, play underway for about 90 minutes or so uh, underway this morning, things are, as we speak right now, at a halt. Uh, Brooke Henderson, by the way, parred her first hole this morning. Yeah, and if you see Lever Sage out on the course, he'll have the TSN 1200 ponchos uh, that he's hanging, uh, handing out. So that'll be a nice delay. So please go see Lee as soon as he gets to the course. And if he doesn't have one for you because he's run out, make sure that you verbally let him know what you think about that, that case. That Where's he didn't my bring poncho? Yes, right? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, big wrench to, uh, TSN TV for cutting coverage of the CP women's open 30 minutes before Brooke Henderson teed off yesterday. I'll, I read that only because I want to give it some context, but I'll, I'll read it and we'll throw the wrench. 
Swung on in the air to right. Back goes Stanton on the track at the wall, leaping, and she is gone. Oh. Stanton caught the ball. Uh, now, again, to reiterate, it's the Golf Channel that uh, has the entire contract for women's golf, and TSN is only picking up the Golf Channel's feed. So, got to protect my uh, colleagues a little bit on yeah. this one, that this is a uh, Golf Channel decision to only cover three hours and only in the morning mm-hmm. on uh, on Thursday and Friday. They are scheduled to, uh, to um, uh, pick up the coverage at 9.30 this morning. So, at least for today... If they resume play, you'll be able to see Brooke Henderson because she is underway today. So. And that's where the high ups, uh, the executives down in Toronto said, listen, let's be progressive here. Let's launch JRTV and that will at least give the fans and the local <laughs> people through Twitter an opportunity. And, yes. you know, the, the launch itself, very successful. I'd agree, right? Like you go back to the early days of TSN. I know they had a lot of fill, but the early reviews, JR, that, that thing was off to a good start. Now... Would you blame Hammer for not being there and, what? And, and not assisting you? And, you know, you're, you're, you're the guy. Like, you're supposed to have your technical assistant with you to make sure you're powered up uh, to edit any of your videos. So would you, you put know any fault towards him? Great point by you, Yeah, Simmer. I think Great so. point. I haven't no. laid enough of the blame for the implosion of JRTV after only three holes yesterday during uh, round one. I haven't put enough blame on uh, well, Hammer for what happened yesterday. So uh, wrench to no. Hammer. For letting things fall apart for our live coverage or our almost live coverage of yesterday. <laughs> Sheho Atani. Oh. That could have been like groundbreaking though, like the sponsorship opportunities and the, I don't want to say millions of dollars there, but at least in the hundreds. Well, uh, listen, I don't have nearly as many Twitter followers as you. I'm like on 10 or 11,000 or something. You've got like 30. But I, I couldn't believe how many oh, people yeah. were hanging on these little videos yeah. I was sending of Brooke Henderson birding the first three holes. I had like 5,000 views of one yeah. of them within a, within, uh, within a couple of hours. No, I, so. I totally And then you shut it. it down. You know, I, I was in the bathtub, and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. And, and I really did think, I'm thinking, man, this may not have been planned, but it's sincerely, the, the grass to it, just for, you know, hey, if it's a day where it's on live TV coverage, but simple fact, it wasn't. Yeah, that, that was a window, an opportunity, and... Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate Hammer was home napping. Well, Simmer, I was not invited by JR to come and be his battery pack <laughs> backpack guy that's just going to like trail him with a cord that's connected to his phone. That would be that'd be classic. The whole idea of JR TV was born in the moment. Okay. Yeah, I had exactly. no plans to do what I did, so I didn't charge my phone before I got there. My plan was to just take a couple of pictures. Uh, maybe I threw out a video, uh, one little piece of video, Brooke Henderson starting around, and then I saw kind of like everybody was into it because there was no te- live television coverage. People are like, they're sitting at work or at home, and they, they you know, you could follow, you can follow online in terms of the uh, LPGA website to see, but you know, you're kind of waiting for 15 minutes. Well, I gave people insto or almost insto updates. Here's her tea opening tee yeah. shot. There's her shot from the fairway into the green. There's the birdie putt, all in nice little thirty second snippets. I made I, I I I made sure as well with fan reaction. So it's the it's the next best thing to being there without being there. Yeah. So, so JRTV on, was born, it, unfortunately, it, yeah. thanks to my iPhone eight, no. which is five <laughs> five generations old now, and which battery lasts well not as long as it should. Uh, JRTV was born but died within yeah. three holes. And it's amazing you think back historically, the launch of CNN TV happened with the shooting of Ronald Reagan. Had they run out of power, you know, 40 years later, maybe they yeah. never even got on the air. Well, I'm, I'm curious what's on the schedule for JRTV today since well, we're not heading out to the hunt. I want to know what can we look forward to? Uh, Is jo- JR on the couch? Well, uh, uh, Josh. <laughs> that would right. be li- live live look at JR napping. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Josh wants to know if JRTV has after hours programming oh, like Blue Nui. Oh, Blue oh, Nui. Oh. JR after dark. <laughs> I don't think anybody is oh. requesting, uh, you know, JR Blue Nui. Now I'm picturing JR in like a Hugh Hefner robe <laughs> cruising around the house. <laughs> Wrench to JR for not being in the 21st century and having a standard battery pack and charge cord with them while launching JRTV. You're doing it because you can do it or you're not doing it because you can't do it. <laughs> Again. Oh, you can do JRTV. Great <laughs> moments are uh, are often things 
I'm not sure what I'm going to say, so I'm going to stop. But it sounds like you're you're about to be you're about to say something. I was really about to say something fantastic. I think you're searching, but you're then searching it went away. for the word spontaneous. I think was really sure. what you're looking at. If Jr. starts rocking a beret and a big cigar, I'm tuning to TSN Montreal. That's from Tim. <laughs> what? Wow. It's radio, so it's uh, I could be doing that as we speak. In fact, I'm doing today's show in a robe, smoking a big cigar. So uh, that's how Bill Daly ended up launching the World Cup of uh, <laughs> Hockey in February. Right. <laughs> <laughs> too much red wine in Paris. A uh, wrench to uh, the listener, Matt. At least you get to golf. Are you a city worker? Are you made of sugar? You may melt in the rain. That's from Unsigned. So there we go. A little listener on listener violence. I'm here for it. Hashtag healthy to the hall. <laughs> Uh, by the way, auto selling uh, setting on uh, lights means your tail lights are on, but daytime running lights may be different. So I don't know if we've answered our question. If you do the auto thing, like like uh, that's what I do, right? My lights, I never touch my lights anymore. Mm-hmm. I think your tail lights are always on, day or night there. But uh, this seems to differ with that. I, I don't know. In other words, I don't know. I think is my answer. I don't want to touch the thing. It's bad luck to even. I assume that the lights are on all the time. And I'm not touching it because the minute I touch it, I put it into something that is going to drain my battery. So uh, that's why it's automatic. Okay. Uh, my first ever wrench to hammer. Obviously, Whoa. the problems with JRTV are all the producer's fault. That's from Grumpy. Great point. Felicite. Wrench to hammer. What? I've been working on filming Christmas movies for the last five to six weeks. It's a big part of Ottawa's movie industry. That's from our friend Tim in Eganville. La plus grande franchise dance, la histoire du hockey. Okay, let's let's use the term movie. You wanted to shut down Ottawa's yeah, totally. movie no, industry yeah, exactly. by dissing yeah. these Hallmark yeah. Christmas movies. I don't want to shut it down. I want to shut down Christmas in July on Hallmark. That's what I want to shut down. I'd also love shutting down my wife watching these movies as well and all those uh, garage store mysteries and and bake sale mysteries and library mystery sh- movies as well. Or sh- they're not. They're shows. They're two hour shows. Nobody's renting these on uh, on Amazon or Netflix or Crave. Aren't you're they? about to say Blockbuster? <laughs> Jumbo Video. <laughs> Give me that free bag of popcorn. By the way, if you um, do, you guys uh, do you guys have the uh, and uh, this is for the listeners. When I say you guys, I mean everybody. Uh, do you have uh, the Disney streaming service? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. There's a new show on there called The Bear. Oh, very good. Watching it, really good. All caught up. What's it about? Four What's episodes. About? It is. Uh, it's about a guy. He he was a big time chef, uh, and comes upon hard times or whatever. Uh, goes back and takes over his brother's restaurant in Chicago. Which is fallen upon hard times, Big and his time, and his yeah. brother has uh, has died by suicide. Was it? Yeah, that's yeah. a bit of a th- fourth episode spoiler so, alert on so, that one. Sorry about that. No well, real. So real story, Jer? I no. don't think so. No, but, but it really, right. really okay. well. It, the episodes are only half an hour long. Uh, that's no, great. On, and they only come out on Wednesdays. Like right. this isn't one of those. Well, you can go now because I think they're five episodes in. I'll just say the acting is tremendous. Story is really good. The episodes are really short. They're only like 25 minutes long. Okay, so you'll be cool, able to whip cool, through yeah. all five episodes in uh, like two and a half hours. But it's, it's uh, really, really good. Yeah. It stars Jeremy Allen White. He He's the brother um, that, that takes over the restaurant. And you'd know him from Shameless. He was the yes. oldest brother in the Shameless. Fantastic oh, okay, actor. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, he's yeah. A really, really good show. It's called The Bear. Like I, yeah. You look at you the title and you're thinking, oh, it's some sort of wilderness thing or whatever. It's not at all. And Shameless is in Chicago as well, was it not? Yes, sir. Yeah, and Hammer's finally started watching Bastards of Baseball, Jer, and has been commenting repeatedly at how tremendous it is. It is fan. I haven't been able to sit down and see it in one solid viewing. I've had two viewings so far, hoping to wrap it up today. Wrench to Major League Baseball as managers, pitching coaches, and base coaches uh, and base coaches for still wearing baseball uniforms. They must feel ridiculous <laughs> getting suited up for a game. Can you imagine any other coach in any other sport wearing a full uniform? That's from Unsigned. Make sure you throw a little muffin in there. Oh, you know what? It is. Uh, well, it is. It, 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 and it, most of them don't fill out the uniforms oh. in the right way, if you know yeah. what I mean. Oh, no, I, I can't. You know, and I think back to uh, – do, do, Zimmerman, uh, when he unfortunately got thrown down by Pedro. Or Zimmer. Zimmer, Zimmer him yeah. too. But <laughs> and now I'm trying to picture, well, you think about, first of all, basketball made a great executive decision during uh, COVID 
where they went with the uh, nice pullover where everybody has that and you got a nice pair of That's slacks. A good look. Yep. And now they've decided after COVID, who needs a suit and tie unless you're, you know, Pat Riley back in the day, Jerry, you're working the sideline. I'm working it, working the refs. I love that look. I even love back when the NHL coaches just had a sweater now for the hoodie, picturing him in the baseball or the football pants or stuff like that. It it must be for some of them. Uh, and that's why they decide, Hammer, to probably go with the uh, – the long pullover after a while, right? I, I like the long pullover, and I'd be okay with that as well. But you're not wearing any kind of nice pants. If you if you haven't seen the inside of a of a Major League Baseball team's dugout, you are not wearing anything fancy whatsoever oh, in there. There's it's just it chalk. There's a middle filth. ground here, and and John Gibbons was kind of there, but he insisted kinda. on wearing the rain jacket all the time, even when it was 100 outside. Well, you never know when right? it's going to rain at Rogers Center. I th- I thought what, like, like what John Tortorella did in the bubble when he kind of wore a nice sweater yeah. uh, behind the bench, like, I, I don't I don't know about you guys. I don't need my NHL coach to be wearing a nice I, I appreciate a nice suit with the back. Well, we kind of reached a, t- a moment in time in which we're all a little more casual about life. Yeah. I'd be okay yeah. with just something business casual, yeah. uh, whether it's an NHL coach behind the bench, whether it's a big league manager in the dugout, uh, NFL coaches. I think the NFL coaches are, are uh, on the sidelines and CFO. I, th- I yeah. think they're kind of where it needs to be. They're yeah. kind of halfway. They, they, they've well, got yeah. the slacks, right? They've yeah. got the beige slacks, black slacks. As long as you have the team colors. Now, too many T-shirts in the CFL. But on the sideline, I agree with you, the colors. And I just the NBA one would work for everybody. And also in Europe, love on the hockey coaches. Nice pair of blue jeans. And then they wear a shirt. And it usually right up on the lapel there has a, a little bit of logo for it from a sponsor. And then you just have a nice sports coat on. Uh, all the suits and the ties. And even at that, as you said, the nice pullover now looks pretty sharp. Throw a couple of sponsors on there, a little team logo, and you're good to go. I, don't know. I think you want to be you want to be with the fellows there. Yeah, you're so close. And that and if you're gonna go out there and argue with an umpire in a suit and tie, get all dirty, maybe jump behind the mound, throw the rosin bag like it's a grenade. You don't want to be <laughs> pull the bag out, <laughs> throw it. That was, that's all big awesome. Oh, the rosin out. bag grenade was the best. Yeah, the big, absolute big, best. Big games come out in a tuxedo, hey? you're all dolled up. Hey? You can't <laughs> maybe with the tails can't. like dumb and dumber. Hey, you go with the orange or the baby blue. Was you the, can't do that. Was the actor who stars in The Bear, who you said was in what show? He was the oldest Shameless. brother. Shameless. Yeah. Uh, was he also the oldest brother on Animal Kingdom? Does that make sense? Uh, Someone just texted that in. I think they were on at the same time. I don't think okay. so. All right. Uh, more wrenches. Wrench to me and my Ottawa Sun scramble partner for going three under through six holes and then completely imploding and not moving on in the A division. That comes from Trevor. I'm going to run you. I'm just waiting for my shift. Oh, often we get self-inflicted wrenches, but Trevor, I'm here for it. And uh, sorry, the fact that you did not move on. I know the feeling. Uh, good morning, boys. Can you? Uh, can we get a wrench to holes 4 and 11 at Black Bear Ridge Golf Course? Please, sincerely, I'm still counting three la- rounds later. That's from Unsigned. <laughs> Is that my slipper or a pair of underwear? <laughs> <laughs> What's that from? Oh, when Gord filled in for you. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. So... Can people I, could could you make out what he said there? Is that my slipper or my underwear or my underwear? Yeah, okay, yeah, I want to make sure yeah, because it's yeah. uh, because that's Gord talking off the air during commercial breaks when Gord was on with me and he was doing the show from home, and uh, Hammer was rolling on Gord because he would spend most of the breaks talking to his two golden retrievers oh, the okay. entire break, the entire break, and so there was kind of a best of uh, uh, after the week was done of Gord talking to his dogs. He was having some great conversations you still have that? with with Jake yep. and with uh, what's the what's his other Oh, Jake is his name? son. Oh, not, that's right. <laughs> Levi <laughs> Levi is one of the dogs. I and... think he talks with the dogs more than he talks with Jake anyway, <laughs> so it's not that big of a stretch. Are those my slippers or did you eat my underwear? Okay. Uh Black yes. Bear Ridge by the way in uh, Belleville for those wondering. It's supposed to be a great track. Never been there. All good. I have the montage uh, of Goody with his dogs. Let's do if it. You'd like it. What's up, boys? Oh yes, I see you both. You're go- both good boys. Hey, you're both smelly. You need another haircut, buddy. You better hurry up. The big pig's coming to get you. Is that my slipper or a pair of underwear? That's all, boys. That's all. <laughs> that was is that my slipper or a pair of underwear? <laughs> Those are the highlights. <laughs>
Why is it a pair of underwear anyways when there's really only one? Why would he think that there's underwear on the ground as well that the dogs could get at? Unless he knows that he got up and just leaves his underwear just lying on the bedroom floor. There is a big difference between slippers and underwear, at least at my house. You think I... I... Right? Both made out of different materials, different look. You're really not wearing, you know, like if if you're you're not mistaking, uh, you know, when you put on underwear in the morning, hopefully, uh, that you're, oh, I put a slipper on instead. I forget, You know what I mean? Like it, they're, yeah. they're, it's not really, uh, they, you can't really confuse the two, no. my point here. And yeah. uh, w- a woman's pair of underwear with the size of them some days, they might swallow that hole without even knowing. So. There, there are more listeners out there that remember the name of Gord's dogs than we do. Uh, Jackson and Levi. Jackson. Yes. Yeah, Jackson, not Jake. So there you go. Running lights do not include rear lights. Auto lights will only come on if dark enough. You usually can tell with the light on the dash when on. That comes from on. So this is causing a raging controversy now, whether okay. the rear okay. lights are on or not, the taillights. Okay. Well, no, the daytime no. running lights. My, my thought is, and I've been in many a rainstorm, especially in the United States, is that the reason you see the red lights is everyone's braking. Uh, so I don't think they're on. In the case of the car... Uh, the beautiful Nissan, which I don't know if you guys have seen how many more cars are trending in the color since I bought it. Um, but I love that when you put on the high beams, when you get close to a car, they turn off automatically. Yes. That is one of the greatest things that's ever happened because who doesn't want to have them on once in a while? Uh-huh. And then you feel good. You feel, hey, the car knows when to turn them down. Here's the problem, though, with that. And I have that. Listen, okay. I drive a Ford Escape from Canada Ford. <laughs> but it has that feature of it turns the it turns the, the, the high beams on yeah, automatically, yeah, yeah. which is awesome. But I also have another car, unnamed, that's a bit of a beater, right, that has none of the, like, this, you know, this other car, it's got, like, the, you know, the, yeah. the all the beeps and whistles. You got to roll down, you, you got to roll down the window. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's crazy how many, but the other one has none of that. And so now, oh, whenever God. I drive the beater, oh, that's right, a and I, I, I'm, I'm just, like, I'm just terrified I'm going to, oh, because I, I'm, I'm just oh. automatically kind of <laughs> listening for, I'm getting close to something because the beeps are starting to go off, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> and all the stuff, like the lights, if someone's in the next lane. <laughs> I get close to a car now, and it actually stops itself. <laughs> I get into another car, I'll just be hammering, cutting people <laughs> off all over the place. Seriously. Like, honestly, I don't even, I, I'm assuming that I cannot get in an accident, no right. matter how, how bad I want to try. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, 8.55. Uh, read the bear show that uh, we talked about. Oh, yeah. 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 Matty Matheson is a famous TV chef, is also the executive producer of the show. He also plays the repairman in the show. So, the, you oh, know, the disheveled dude. repairman? Yeah. Who's the disheveled guy? Who doesn't get to take part in family dinner. Correct. He's the executive producer of the show. Had no idea. Had no idea. He's also a, fa- a famous TV chef. So there we go. Had to be somebody because the lingo, the writing in it is is fantastic too. And yeah, oh, it's, it's just really well. It's just a really well written and well acted show. And it's just nice to watch one that's just thirty minutes. Yeah, that it's compact. Although and it's just go from from tip to tail. This waiting for a week now for the next episode of a show. <laughs> now you know we've moved into uh, everything is binge worthy now, where you find a show and if it's more than one episode, you just watch everything. Uh, N- th- this this way of doing things is just uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I've got that. Too and old I've got school. She Hulk on Disney Plus as well. That is again just one episode a week, hmm. and my daughter and I can't take it. We need more. All right, so they're in a rain delay or a lightning delay, I guess, at the uh, CP Women's Open at uh, the Hunt Club. Uh, I can tell you that just as the horn sounded to uh, stop play, the Brooke Henderson did birdie her second hole. Uh, of the day today. So she now moves to uh, three under par as we are in a rain delay or a lightning delay at uh, the CP Women's Open at the Hunt Club. We'll let you know uh, when things resume, hopefully uh, shortly. The leader who set the course record yesterday, Paula Rito, who has a connection to the show that we detailed earlier this morning and could have had a bigger one had Hammer been on his game. Uh, she was scheduled to tee off at 8.38 this morning, but obviously with things in a delay, that will uh, not transpire until a little later we on We won't morning. be getting any awards for coverage of the golf tournament. Nope. Uh, killed JRTV during a nap. <laughs> Doesn't get the leader <laughs> or a famous caddy. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. Like, what you are... had the option. <laughs> I... I again. Okay, loose. We got to re- lure. We got to reset, 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 reset the story. Reset the story. It is, it is a good one, Hammer. Paula Rito, who is a, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, a relatively unknown LPGA golfer. She's been, she's been, she's 32. She's been on tour for a while, but hasn't won a major, or whatever. She is, she is a journey woman, LPGA player. 
She is staying at the house of a friend of yours yep. in Barhaven? Yep. Is Trevor. that right? Okay. Yep. Big Trev. Big because T. there's a connection to Purdue University when she went to school. She's from South Africa. He texted you earlier this week and said, hey, this LPGA player is staying at my house. Yeah, um, would you have any interested? Uh, are you? Would you be interested in talking in to her? In talking to she, her, she's uh, yeah, a lot of energy. Yeah, uh, great conversationalist, really cool person. You texted me and said, you know, you, you didn't say would you be interested in interviewing. You just said, hey, there's uh, an LPGA player at, at the uh, tournament who's staying with a friend of mine. That was where you left it, and you mentioned what her name was. Yeah, I looked her up and. And you had no interest in talking to I her. It wasn't that. It was just like, well. You did not have was, an interest in talking to the person that I was has the record. Uh, more record hopeful of, of getting some bigger names on the show, potentially. I brought you a name. <laughs> who just Little so did we know lead. that she was going to go out on day one and set the course record with a <laughs> nine under 62. Hammer like, was projecting this out. That's the beautiful if, part, Hammer. You did the research, right? If we had been able to, if we had have gotten her on, which we should have, had you been on your game, we would be <laughs> dining off the fact of the morning show karma, maybe wow. for the rest of the existence of this show. Just we brought facts. on a journey woman LPGA player. Who went on to set the, you know, who was on with us, and then two days later set the course record. We 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 could have we could have run with that for years and killed Brooke Henderson's chance to win the tournament. Exactly. <laughs> and instead, you texted you know me what? once, and then it died on the vine. Just the fact that I texted you, I believe, gave her the TSN morning karma. The fact that there was some sort of conversation there about speaking to her, she got the karma then and there. So I think we can still take credit for her. Record breaking opening round at the Hunt Club. If she We're cool with that, if she wins, yeah, okay, if she holds on through all four rounds and wins, we'll get her on the show on Monday. All right, Simmer well, doesn't well, care because he's will we? Oh, no, no, you've got the connection, that, you're gonna make this happen. No, well, you're hammer, make hammer it time, hammer will be at the post, uh, That's true. victory party big celebration. I think it sounds like this dude's got a big pool going. A oh, beautiful pool. Oh, yeah, yeah he's okay. beautiful, beautiful place. My son calls him T Money. T-Money's got a great estate in Stonebridge. You know what? We'll do the show live from there Monday morning. Oh, nice. Hey. With we, Paula. We could. Huh? We, we, could, we could do that? <laughs> what? I'm going like, to make that right now. Does T-Money wear, like, chains T-Money's out there right now <laughs> with Paula. Uh, he, followed, uh, he followed Paula yesterday and is out there again today. Okay. Uh, final text here on the taillight question from Tim. Yeah. The taillight question could be answered quickly by reading your owner's manual. But based on your male-centric audience, none of us are likely to do that. Tim, Tim, 100% confirmed. For sure where that, that would be located in the vehicle. I have never looked at an owner. They make them too thick, yeah. quite frankly. Well, no, if if would you, just if, make it two well, pages, yeah, just if, the stuff if, I need to If you to ever know. had to do the spare tire thing, then you went into the manual. That, that was a time where, in trying to figure out where it was actually, we know where, you know where the tire's located. But I need to figure out exactly how to get it out of there. That would have been time. And I'm going to do a forecast right now just by the sounds of the roof. Uh, we are getting some heavy range air. Would you agree? I don't hear it as my in a more sound. Oh, okay. Studio yeah, than that's you are. usually my indication. It's pounding that, on the roof right well, now. Well, it sure sounds like it. All right. Which is, which is always of concern here in the building as well with the flat roof and maybe a couple of leaks. Uh, anyway, all right, just past 9 o'clock, we'll get you the latest news and sports. And then uh, when we return, we'll talk a little uh, OUA football. The new season set to begin coming up uh, tomorrow. Carlton is home to McMaster in U Ottawa on the road in Windsor. We'll talk to uh, GG's head coach, Marcel Belfoy, coming up. I know I mentioned the movie tickets. Hammer forgot to uh, remind me of that. So we'll have those to give away. A pair of passes, tickets and treats to Landmark Cinemas to go catch the movies this weekend as well. We'll give that away coming up before 10 right here on Sports Radio TSN 1200.